Today on Passion for Food, we ask the age-old question that I just made up. Is jambalaya the best one-pot dish in the world? I definitely think it is, and hey, I'm no jambalaya. But to know for yourself, you have to give it a try. So let's get started here, and I will show you how to make this easy Cajun jambalaya. We are going to want a nice large pot for this. I like this Dutch oven, but a soup pot would work just as well. And to that, we're gonna add one stick. That is a full half a cup of butter. Yes, that is a lot of butter. Thanks for noticing. Now, the interesting thing about this jambalaya recipe is that it actually starts with a roux, which is more common with a gumbo, really, than it is jambalaya. But before we use that to build our roux, I'm actually gonna use it to help sear our meat, whatever meat you need to sear. In this case, our boneless, skinless chicken thighs. You might be tempted to use chicken breasts, but not only do they dry out, but they also cost twice as much, so that's not how we're doing things today. Anyway, we just want to cook these for a minute or two until they release from the pan and get a nice golden brown color. And we're just going to do that on both sides until we've officially arrived at Brown Town. Oh yeah. And then we can go ahead and pull these off and just cut them into bite-sized pieces for later. Now, don't skip this part, or you might rue the day that you forgot to make the roux. So we want to add equal parts flour to our butter. That was half a cup of flour for half a cup of butter. Now, if we just cook this for about a minute, it's going to be usable, and that would be what we would call a blonde roux. But to squeeze the maximum amount of flavor out of this, I'm going to continue cooking this over low, low heat until it gets a nice dark brown color and a really nutty aroma. We want to stir this two or three times, but you really don't have to harass it the whole time. After 10 minutes, we can see and smell that it's ready. It really does get this wonderful uh, nutty aroma to it. Now it's time for the Cajun Trinity. This is inspired by the French Maripois. The difference being, instead of carrots, we're going to be using capsaicin, a.k.a. these red peppers, roughly sliced. Uh, along with about three medium onions. We want about twice as much onion as red pepper but we don't have to pin down an exact amount. Uh, along with about four stalks of celery. I actually really like the leafy parts. We'll just slice that on in here. And if you've watched my channel before, you probably figured I was also going to put a whole head of garlic in there. Now you know normally I like crushing it like I like crushing my enemies, but today let's experiment with a new technique. I'm calling it the slap chop. Man, leveling up my chopping skills has really paid off. All right, we can go ahead and add about a tablespoon and a half of salt and then pepper to taste. And now we want to mix up all of our wonderful aromatics into that hot roux. We want to continue cooking this over medium heat for about three minutes or until you can really smell that garlic. And our vegetables are just starting to turn a little bit translucent. Keep an eye on the bottom of your pot here. This can stick with that roux. At this point, I'm going to add my last batch of seasonings, consisting of about two tablespoons of oregano, one tablespoon of cumin, and one tablespoon of chili powder. Now, I can't for the life of me remember what Cajun chef it was that said this, but when it comes to gumbo and jambalaya, you can add just about anything that crawls, swims, or flies. And me personally, I like having one of each. So, in addition to our chicken, I'm also going to be using about a pound of smoked and dewy sausage. So, we'll just chop that in there. And we'll also go ahead and dump in our now chopped up chicken thighs from earlier. We'll just give that a real quick mix here, and then we want to add about four cups of water. And yeah, you could use stock if you want, but the amount of flavor we have in here already just really doesn't need the help, honestly. We want to stir as we bring this back up to a simmer, paying special attention to try and dissolve all those wonderful little brown bits that we've developed on the sides and bottom. At which point, we want to go ahead and add two bay leaves. Now, don't forget and accidentally leaf those out. And now we just want to cover and simmer this for about 30 minutes. 
at which point our flavors are already marrying together wonderfully. And we'll just go ahead and add one full cup of rice. We'll give this a quick mix, and then we just want to cover it and simmer it on low for another 30 minutes. At which point we can see our jambalaya has thickened up beautifully. And just to keep the critics at bay, let's go ahead and pull those two bay leaves out of here real quick. But before we add our final ingredient, let's not forget the most important step, taste for seasoning. But that was perfect, so we'll go ahead and add about 10 ounces of peeled and deveined shrimp. We are adding these right at the end because they only take a couple of minutes to cook and they're so easy to overcook. Like if we add this at the same time we add the rice, they're going to be kind of hard and rubbery. And uh, nobody likes hard rubbery shrimp. So we'll just cook those for another two or three minutes until the shrimp turn pink. And then we are ready to serve this beautiful Cajun jambalaya. Which brings us back to our original question. Is jambalaya the best one-pot meal in the world? Well, that's obviously subjective, but I kind of think it is. But let me know in the comments below. Do you think so? Or what do you think the best one-pot meal in the world is? But whether it's the best one-pot meal or not, I still hope you find an occasion to make this one. That andouille sausage, seared chicken, and perfect shrimp is just a great combination. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode of Passion for Food. If you have, give me a thumbs up below, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell so you don't miss our future recipes. And check out one of our other great videos playing on the screen now. This has been Graham with Passion for Food.